Okay, so in this chapter, we're going to cover output nodes, and it'll let us save out certain textures like our diffuse, ambient occlusion, and certain flow masks that we can composite together in Photoshop. So here's the basic device view of, of this current test level. It's a lot of things we just went over in the previous chapters, so there should be no real surprises here. The end result is um, kind of a canyonous area, as you can see. Now if you click Set Terrain Color, you can change some of these presets, and these, these textures can be saved out and used as a starting point for your Photoshop file. There's some kind of wacky ones, but I, I like the acid, acid bleached world. This effect has a lot of nice striations and gives you, gives you more to work with once you export it out in Photoshop, even if you end up changing the colors completely. So we can click Converter on the top and add a colorizer. Now this gives us the ability, we hook this up after our erosion, and that just gives us a straight diffuse of whatever um, color that color preset we had chosen. And then if you go to the Output tab, you can add a bitmap output, which is the colorful disk, and also a height output. Now with height outputs, it's anything grayscale. So in this case, we are outputting a height map there, but it doesn't always have to be. Sometimes you're exporting out just grayscale ambient occlusion and you still want to use the height output node. So for this, we want to export it out as a PGM file, and that, that's a 16-bit grayscale image that uh, CryEngine needs. So we'll, we'll save this. It's a little bit cumbersome because you can't open it up at, uh, by default in Photoshop. So this, uh, you can't really modify it much, but the good news is you, you don't really need to. I'll click the right output to disk. And if your level is already built, it should only take a few seconds. So we'll say, okay. And I'll double click the, the bitmap output and save this, specify where we're saving it. And this will just be a BMP. CryEngine uses those to import your mega texture. So let's hop into Photoshop and open up our diffuse. And we can see it's all the color information based on our world machine map, void of any lighting information. So this is definitely a good start. And again, that was from the colorizer device that we hooked up. We were able to save this out. Now I'm going to go over to the selector tab and the fourth one over is select convexity. And I'm going to take the strength way down here. And this will serve as a starting point for our ambient occlusion map, which will go export it again as a height, height output. And we'll, this can just be a, a bit map. Um, the real important one is the height map that has to be 16 bit, but we'll just do a bit map for anything that we're compositing on top of the regular diffuse. Now we can hop back into Photoshop and open up the AO map. Now you can see all the, the nice detail that, that this gives us a, a lot more definition in the terrain. These details aren't found just in the color, so that's why we want to combine this with our diffuse map. And it's also nice because it's not, it's not directional lighting, it just defines the, some more detail in the grooves and the flow of the, the terrain. So I'll put this on a multiply layer in Photoshop. So I just copied it from the source file, pasted it in this texture, and I'm adjusting the brightness contrast now. With Multiply, it always makes the image darker, so you end up wanting to lighten that quite a bit, so you get a kind of a neutral value as a starting point for your terrain. Now I'm adding a Gaussian blur, and I'm going to do a real low radius. I just want to take out the, the harsh crunchy, but I still want a lot of the nice details. So. 0.3 might, might be efficient. Now I'm going to go to Selective Color with the Multiply layer still active, and I'm going to change the top to Blacks, and you can see you can actually skew the blacks of the layer and add some, um, some color back into it. And this is, this is handy just so it doesn't uh, get that kind of soot effect over the entire terrain. It adds a little liveliness. In the same vein, if you're, you know, working in a traditional media, it's, it's recommended that you avoid painting with straight black. It kind of deadens the image and uh, loses some of the, the life of the, the paint. And it's the same, same theory with, with textures. 
Now the next thing I want to export is the flow mask, and that can be found on the second node of the erosion output, and we can hook that back into another height output because it's just a grayscale texture that that the erosion uses to um, carve into the, the height map. And we can also use this as a, a texture overlay. This again can just be a bitmap since we're compositing it back into our diffuse texture in Photoshop. So we open our flow mask, hit control A and control C and control V to paste in our scene. And I'm gonna go to image adjustments invert because I actually want the flow channels to be darker. Switch this to multiply also. And then we'll crank down the opacity around 29, 30%. Now you can see it's, it's a lot more subtle. Maybe bring, crank it up a tad more. That, that seems pretty cool. Toggle it on and off. And those details will, will add a lot of far read so when you're looking at these mountains um, from a distance it'll have a lot more definition and you'll actually see you know erosion marks cutting in and it'll match up with how the the terrain is looking i'll also do the selective color trick going back into the blacks of our flow layer and cranking the cyan either direction to to bring some color into the flow mask i'm kind of liking this i like how the textures are playing together and we get a lot of cool cool colors going on still which will be a start now the last thing is you need to go to image rotate canvas 90 degrees clockwise and this is specific to CryEngine for it to line up directly with our height map this is the last step you need to do so it's a little abstract but trust me it's something you gotta do life is life is tough sometimes in the 3D realm so now we want to save this texture out as a bitmap, BMP. Now let's start up uh, CryEngine and make sure you run it as an administrator. In CryEngine 3.4, there's a glitch where you have to change your layout um, under skins from CryLight and then back to CryDark for the whole all the menus, bars to show up again. It's a weird little toggle. So now I'll go to File, New Level. And whatever you name your level here is it's actually going to create a folder. Now under height map resolution, we saved our file as a 2048. And under meters per unit, you want to change that to one. It'll be plenty of room. Um, if you have more meters per unit, it'll change the size of your level drastically. So it's a scale thing. If you're doing a flight sim, you'd want to have well, quite a bit more meters per unit. Now our blank level is uh, just a giant ocean and our terrain is underwater by default. So now if we import our height map, click on the PGM and open that up. So that is our terrain that is displaced from our height map. So the areas that are closer to white that you can see over there on the right side of our window, those are higher up. But if you notice, if we compare this to our world machine level, the scale seems a lot more aggressive. The slopes are a lot larger. If we look at our 3D view here, there's not much, uh, there's not as much of a height change. And that, you know, this is a really specific look. So we want to try to get that closer. So we can change that by going to the modify tab and set max height. Now, this is, um, we could try 650. We don't want it quite half as high. This is just a personal preference, so I'll re-import the height map after you set the max height, and it should snap to your, your new setting. This is looking a little closer. Still uh, seems a little bit larger scale than our world machine map, but it, it'll do for the purpose of this demo. Now I'm going over to layer painter mode, and at the very bottom there's an option, tiles resolution and you want to click on each tile and change it to 1024. And this is specific because we have a, tw a 2048 texture, which is the equivalent of four 1024s. Now let's go up to Terrain, Export Import Terrain Texture, and select the four grids and find your diffuse. And close that out and it should snap. 
Now remember, you do have to click and drag over those four tiles for it to import correctly over the entire thing. So here's our, our world. We have the color in there. And you'll notice the checker pattern up close. And we'll deal, that, deal with that later when we actually add terrain layers to this. But this is our mega texture. It's mostly for the far read. And you can see uh, if you hit Control G, you'll get it into your level. And you can run around and with your gun and shoot, shoot at nothing. But right now, the time of day is defaults to uh, pretty sped up. So it, the lighting will change on you really quick. So if you under terrain, you go to the time of day option and change your play speed to zero, then it'll um, stop on whatever whatever time of day that you're set to. Now, the best thing is if you go to entity and choose vehicles, you're gonna probably wanna drive a Humvee around. I've wasted the last uh, year of my life just driving around Humvees and CryEngine maps, and I recommend it to anybody. So we can drag this in our scene here, fly down towards the ground and hit Control G, hop in this bad boy, make sure you press F towards the front of the door, and give it a little test drive. And that's my, uh, I really love with with World Machine and um, importing the terrain, it's all hooked up, it works with the physics, so it's a really um, good way to work as opposed to having a ton of props that are just out of max or whatever. This this actually works in engine and it's, it's extremely quick. I mean, in a matter of 20, 30 minutes, you can have the whole layout of your, your level and a, a really good starting point and you can tweak it from there.